Good afternoon and welcome to Sawadi Patia's Celebrities and Personalities here in Patia. Today we're very, very fortunate. We have a very famous tennis player who played in the semi-finals of Wimbledon. Uh, his brother married a, a very famous tennis player and he himself, David Lloyd, was captain of the Ryder Cup, uh, not the Ryder Cup, the Davis Cup team, sorry. Um, and we have him here today with us. David Lloyd, thank you very much for coming here today to see us. Um, you're in Patia for a while, aren't you? Yeah, you very nicely invited me to come by. I haven't seen you for a few years and I just love taking your money at golf, so here I am. David and I used to play golf together quite a lot and uh, unfortunately he always wins. <laughs> David, you're a very, very competitive animal. Um, I've known that for a long, long time. And um, in your tennis career, you, you became very, very famous through the doubles. Yeah, I, I played doubles because uh, I, I was a much better doubles player than singles player. And I had some great partners, I played my brother obviously, uh, Mark Cox, and, and we got to the, to the final of the Davis Cup in 1978. And also I became Davis Cup captain, which was which, which was great because I had uh, Tim Hemman and Greg Rosetsky playing right. for us. So we had a, a very good team and uh, we played, a, could have been one of the best victories in Britain. We played against America, but we actually lost in, 10-8 in the fifth, where Rosetsky lost to Jim Courier, but it was a great match. So we had a great time, and uh, you know I played with some great players. I played with uh, Rod Laver, I played with Jimmy Connors, I played with Borg, I played with McEnroe, Fantastic. I played Gonzalez. So I go back through a, quite a long spell of different people, because I played when it was amateur, and then I played when it was professional. Did, did you miss tennis at all? Or? I missed the uh, the competition, yeah. Yeah, I don't think there's anything, well you've done it yourself in things, you know when you play Davis Cup, they say David Lloyd playing for Britain, then your name is never mentioned again. So uh, it, you know, it is very special when you play for your country and I think it's it's very sad that uh, the younger generation in Britain, Andy Murray I'm, I'm, I'm in particular, doesn't seem to want to play for his country. I find that staggering. Yeah. You know, he's a young kid, he hasn't won anything yet and, and, and uh, you, you really should put back into the game something that you've taken out and uh, playing for your country is very very special. I must tell you just something about David that uh, I once went to his house for a barbecue and we were there were many many people there. I remember your mum and dad were there and so on and uh, we were talking about serving in tennis do you remember? Yep. And you took us out in the garden to your tennis court and you put three or four tennis cans, you know the three ball cans, he put three or four cans on the other side of the court. And he said he bet anybody that he could knock nine out of 10 down with 10 serves. And you did, didn't you? Yeah, Remember that? yeah no, that's what we used to practice Serving all day. from one side, across the net. Yeah, boxing, in. very boring, but it's the only way to, you know, only way to, you know. It's, quite, uh, it's quite fantastic. I mean, the skill, your, your skill level obviously was, a, was, was phenomenal. I mean, um, you know, people that do any kind of sport, aspire to be good at, 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 at what they're doing especially um, you know in golf and I know you love golf yeah I think you know if you're going to be good at sport and you know same as when when you know you 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 uh, did your um, judo you you have to be completely fit you have to know your skill you have to know your opponent because we're one-to-one -one like you were one-to-one -one. Yeah, right, yeah. you know where golf is is only one-to-one -one when they play match play so you know to me when when I want to watch a the best golf event the best golf event to me is Ryder Cup because you see head to head uh, and I and I think that to me is what sports all about the head to head the one to one and I, and that's why I think tennis was you know what I learned at tennis helped me people say sports people make very bad business people and I'm not sure what that why that is because if it's a one to one sport you are always assessing your opponent's weaknesses and strengths exactly when right. you're doing a business deal you're you, you know you're trying to um, make sure that whatever you're doing, you're doing it to your strength and the yeah. deal is only a good yeah, deal yeah. if both people are happy. Yeah. Okay, we're talking about business. Your, your business um, in the David Lloyd centres in Great Britain in particular were a phenomenal excess, uh, success. Um, obviously, you, you, you put that down to your your will to want well, to win your... I, 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 yeah, we, we, we did it. You know, We were the only people doing it. It took a lot of you know, it was really hard to make people believe we could do it. But we were, we were the only one in the industry and we had good quality, we, you know, we had great staff and uh, it's now a massive empire which my son runs. Uh, he's now got 900,000 members. 
96 yeah. clubs, you know, all over the world. So it's a pretty big empire. So he runs that. Uh, and I concentrate now, and, and this is why I'm in Thailand, apart from wanting to come over and see you. We're, we're doing big developments here. We're doing a very, very large development in Phuket, Phuket yeah. which is uh, a beautiful piece of land. And uh, it's taken a long time because it's very different rules here, but I, hopefully we're pretty much there now and we should start building and building 27 great villas. Oh, fantastic. I was talking to a friend of mine that just this morning, a, a Thai friend, um, and I was trying to explain to him that um, your name is synonymous with with all all kinds of different sports within your sports centre and your, your fitness centres. And I, I, the way I explained to him, I said, if you look at all the London black taxis, <laughs> yeah. they've got your name written all over them, David Lloyd, <laughs> Centre all over the black taxis. That was the best, that was the best advertising, because you know, we didn't pay for it. Amazing. We, it, we didn't pay one thing, one penny for that. Really? All we did, we gave the guy, we did, we had eight London clubs and we said, we chose eight taxis who were in that area and we gave them a membership. Really? So, yeah, and every, every other year, all of them come together into one car park and they take the picture of it. So now there's about a hundred black cabs all in one place with, with, the, with the name on it. But, but it's, a, it's a great thing for me to be able to tell somebody, a Thai person that has never been to Great Britain, that we've got black cabs with your name written massively right the way across. Yeah, it, yeah, it was, a, it it was, was totally was, impressed with it that. It was the best, best advertising because it didn't cost us a penny apart from for memberships and the, and the cabbies love it because they come there and and they you know cabbies are you know London cabbies are a breed into themselves oh, you know they God. come there and well your dad uh, and they can't stop talking so if they're a member of the club bingo in the back there so you, you, you're bound to get something out That's of right, it yeah we've, we've got uh, quite a few cab drivers here expats that stay here right and uh, two of them I know in particular used to be members of your your centres David um, just want to talk very briefly about your how you feel about Thailand in general I know you've been to Phuket I know you've been all over Thailand and you've been here to Pattaya quite a few times um, just give us your you know just a quick well quick I, scenario. I think it's a great place I think it's a, the, the people are great uh, I think there's some things that would really help uh, investment outside investment uh, mainly from uh, Eastern because the Western culture is, is uh, totally very different, different. Yeah, totally and different. so when you come here, you 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 need to learn the culture, which is fine. I agree with all that, but I think the one that is really difficult for a developer is the fact that a Ferang can't own land, mm. and what happens is that you come up with a very convoluted method of of owning it uh, with a lease arrangement with an offshore company and what that does is two things one it puts the buyer off but it also takes money out of the country because the money is being paid for the lease outside, outside of the country yeah. so in my opinion if you allow and most countries have done that they've all in Dubai did it they all slipped into the fact that yes you can own land and they they, they gradually change the law because if you say to someone right you can own the land you're a foreigner and by the way your capital gains tax is 10% or whatever on the total development much more money would stay in the country it's much easier for someone to understand what they're buying because they're owning the land because British people especially want to own land. I mean, they don't, can, can they don't just, understand it. So uh, at this point, for the, for the viewers that have been buying properties here, I mean, this is what David's actually talking about. We can't buy a property here in our own name. It's no. very, very difficult. We you have, have to, we have, to have a Thai company name. which owns the land. Then that Thai company can, if, if, if it's the way it's done, have a lease with the offshore company which you do control. Yeah. So you control the actual bricks and mortar through a lease, but you don't own the land. Yeah. And so it's complicated. And then what happens when you sell the house, the money is paid for the lease, not for the land. So exactly, the yeah. money's going out of the country. Yeah. So what I'm saying is if you make it transparent for, for, for a certain size of development, if you put a certain amount of money in, then you should be able to own the land. And when it's sold, you're selling the land and the property and the tax will stay in the country. Yeah. So, you know, if you're selling a four million pound house and there's 10% tax, you know, the, the government's gonna get 200,000 approximately tax income where the other way they're getting zero and it doesn't seem to make sense to me that and it makes it very difficult for people to understand because you you can't you can lend you can borrow money from a Thai bank to build but you can't borrow money from a Thai bank to buy land because you don't own the land and that's the problem and it goes on and on and on it's very hard it's very good for our viewers to know that because obviously um, it, it, uh, if you've got a, a business project it's exactly the same as if 
uh, a normal type, a normal English person is buying a house. It's exactly the same system. Yeah. And um, I agree. I mean, we, we all. No, I, th I think they could simplify because it is a great country. I think you got, you know, there's enormous potential, and you know, and, you know, people say, oh, until they've been here. You know, I had a medical the other day about three months ago in the Bangkok hospital in Phuket, and it's as good as any hospital in England. I mean, it really is. Well, yeah. the, the machinery is fantastic. The doctors were fantastic. I got the results in 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 in, in a Ten day, months, yeah. not 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 having to wait three a month weeks, for yeah, it or whatever. Months, yeah. You know, and, and uh, it, I don't think people realise quite how high quality there is in Thailand, which is which until you take them and show them, is actually it, it's hard for them to realise the quality. I mean, the you know just uh, simple things like the the central festival uh, shopping malls, they're as good as Westfield. I mean, Anywhere anyone you know when, when 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 Westfield opened in in London about must be a year ago, it was on every paper Westfield opening. There's ten of what ten Westfields here. Uh, as good and, and 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 to me it's it's sad that the, the country hasn't been able to get that across to a lot yeah. of people well david i'd like to thank you very much and can i just say that you you were a fantastic competitor you've been a phenomenal motivator for the british team in tennis and uh, an entrepreneur fantastic um i don't know what we would call it but an entrepreneur and i'd like to thank you very much for giving all the people in Great Britain so much uh, pleasure with your leisure centres. Thank you. Thank, thank you very thank much you. for coming. Thank you.